I did there, I adjusted the mic stand and then I take the mic off. <laughs> Just to show them I'm putting the extra work. I recently became a lunch lady. Which, uh, you know, there's no masculine term for it, so that's it. That's all I got. There's no lunch man, you know. Oh, look at the lunch man. <laughs> You serve kids lunches at a school, you're a lunch lady. It's the default term. And uh, it could happen to anybody, it turns out. All you have to do is have a friend who's a lunch lady, and he calls you up and he says, I can't make my shift. Do you want to fill in? <laughs> Boom, you're a lunch lady. It's all right. It all happens so fast. <laughs> and the kids were first graders. What I wasn't expecting was how mature they were. They were like, what was a private school? And they all just came up like little businessmen. <laughs> there are uniforms, and there's a counter, and I'm behind the counter, and on the counter there's a plate with chicken nuggets and pasta and salad and potatoes, and the kids are supposed to tell me what they want by pointing to the things on the plate, and then I assemble the plate for them. And this one little kid, he comes up, he starts patting his hands on the uh, counter like he's like, ooh, <laughs> let's see, mm. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to win some chicken nuggets, for sure. And then, if you don't mind, just pick the corn out of the salad for me. I just like the corn, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I just turn around and I'm like thinking to myself, stay positive, don't get negative on the job, you know? I'm always really, like, every time I feel myself slipping into negativity, I just try to, like, talk myself out of it somehow. I'm like, this is fine, it's no big deal. Yeah, all right, you're in your 30s and you're serving these little kids lunches and they're bossing you around, fine. Fine. But think about it like this, these kids are the future, you know? One day you might be working for these kids. But then it hit me, I was working for those kids right then. The kids have already won. This kid was beating me in every way in life. He was up way earlier than me because he was in school in time. And uh, he's wearing a uniform. And the kid had it all together. And then I'm putting together his plate and he hits me with this from, from behind. He's at the counter. He's like, and if you don't mind, go ahead and throw a few extra chicken nuggets on the plate for me. <laughs> even worse because the guy who owns the lunch lady company warned me beforehand exactly about this. He's like, listen, my, my business is in your hands today. I want you to know that these kids are sharp and they're going to try to take advantage of you. They don't pay for extra chicken nuggets. Especially on chicken nugget day, they're going to want some extra chicken nuggets. And they know they're not allowed them. But because you're new, they're going to try and, and work on your weakness. He even took a shot at me. He's like, you're kind of like a big softy. You're probably like... He saw, he saw I had chicken nugget sympathy. You look at me. He probably was like, that's probably one of the kids who would have wanted extra chicken nuggets. So I, I was like, you know... But what if, they, what if they insist, you know? What if they're like, I'm really hungry. I'm like, I'm just trying to like... Spitball scenarios here. I said, what if the kid's like, I'm really hungry today, like, and he's a little scrawny kid, and like, what am I supposed to do, just really don't give him any more chicken nuggets? He's like, here's what you do. You look him in the eye, and you tell him, I would love to give you more chicken nuggets, but I can't, because I would lose my job. <laughs> Maybe I should maybe I should jump ship, you know, switch over. Why am I loyal to this guy's company? Because this kid is a sharp kid. I told you he's tapping the counter, that's a sign. <laughs> what if I start talking to him and he's like, you know something? I'm killing it right now in first grade. Do you know about that? <laughs> I got five stars across the report card, you know. I'm fi five stars in coloring, five stars in recess, five stars in nap time, whatever. <laughs> I'm on, a I'm on a trajectory to greatness right now. If I keep this up, I'm going to be like valedictorian in my high school. I'm going to be the, the 
mocha cum latte. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. That's how far away I was from the mocha cum latte. <laughs> I'm gonna be the mocha cum latte. And then I'm gonna get that hot internship. As said by elderly people, the hot internship. <laughs> That internship that's that's sought after by everyone in that big company. I'm gonna work my way up to the top of that company. Then I'm gonna break off and start my own company. It's gonna be wildly successful. And all my employees are gonna have a 401k and paid vacations and, 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 and a fantastic salary. Does that sound like something you'd be interested in? Yes, sir. <laughs> you don't want to be a lunch lady your whole life, do you? No, sir. <laughs> Go ahead and put a few extra chicken nuggets on that. <laughs> And I'm imagining scenarios where I'm negotiating and learning, look, I'll give you five extra chicken nuggets if I can have all the Jewish holidays off. I'll give you ten extra chicken nuggets if I could have a company car. A minute for the long haul, kid, come on! I got married this year. I was, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing because I was never good at picking up women, so it's a big relief. It's freed up a lot of my time. Uh, I, I, I always went as far as I had to go, this girl, I, I remember I liked this girl and she was an alcoholic. And so I pretended to be an alcoholic so I could go with her to her AA meetings as a chance to flirt with her. And, and uh, I would go to, to this, this was in, in New York City in the basement of a church. And I'm sitting there in this AA meeting and everybody's going around and they're getting up and telling these stories, these fantastic stories. This guy gets up and he's like, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I had a... Uh, I had a house and a boat and a wife, and I lost it all from drinking. And I'm sitting there going, man, that guy had a house and a boat and a wife. I haven't lived at all, you know? <laughs> and as, as everybody went around, I was like, man, these guys all have amazing life experience. And I was getting very nervous because I didn't have any prepared material, you know? And, uh, and, I, and I get up, and I was, I was very lousy at it. I go, hi, I'm Danny, and I'm an alcoholic, and everybody's very supportive. I go, well... I'll tell you what happens with me is I, uh, I drink a lot and then too much, really. I just putting them down uh, one after another. And then everyone says, cut it out. And I'm like, no, I can't. It's a problem. And, uh, vomiting. I vomited. Anyway, let's move on to this next guy. He's a total mess. You're going to love him. So. <laughs> So then all week, I was like, I, got, I, gotta, I gotta correct the lie. I gotta make things right, you know? Uh, so that next, next time I don't get caught and thrown out. Because it also would blow everything with the, with the girl. I didn't want people to pelt me with AA coins. So I, uh, <laughs> so I was getting blackout drunk every night. I'm the only person who became an alcoholic from going to AA. <laughs> so one night I was drinking in Times Square. I had like half a bottle of Jaeger and I'm stumbling home. And uh, I see there's an abandoned hot dog cart in the middle of Times Square. I was living in Times Square, and I, I don't know how, how, why, to this day, why I was like abandoned. The guy's like, that's it, I'm going back to medical school. <laughs> <laughs> this was a mistake. But I fall into this hot dog cart, and it, it, it kind of rocks one way and then back the other way. And because I was so off balance, it just bumps into me and I fall down and this hot dog cart falls on top of me and all these compartments open up and these waterfalls of nasty, horrible hot dog water all start pouring down on me. And I keep trying to get up but the, the, the greasiness of the hot dog water and how drunk I was, I just keep falling back down again. And then the smell hits me all at once and I just start projectile vomiting all over myself. And right in the middle is I remember smiling and thinking this is going to kill at AA next week. <laughs> I always get hit with the with the unsolicited advice of uh, of how to lose weight, and uh, it used to bother me, but then I realized it's really coming from a nice place. People are really saying, "Danny, you should you should consider living longer." You know? <laughs> That's really the message there. They're saying, S "Stick around, get old," you know. And the only problem is that I worked at an old age home, and I know there's no trophy at the end of that race. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen what happens to everybody who keeps himself in good shape and makes it there. After all the effort of eating right and staying healthy, uh, usually nine times out of ten, falling is what gets them. They just fall and somebody shows up with a big broom and sweeps them away. And make them... <laughs> somebody told me, uh, every time you eat a burger, you're taking six minutes off your life. And I thought about it and I, and I went home and I threw away all my socks. Uh, 
And I went and I got like a giant 60 pack of socks with all that had the same matching pattern because I figured out I was eating four burgers a month but it was taking me 30 minutes a month to pair my socks. <laughs> so I gained six minutes a month on my life without giving up any burgers, you understand? <laughs> That's like the beginning of immortality. <laughs>